Shalom. Call Halal Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. The more honest of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutation and salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalawam, to the Akem and to the Akwaf, that'll be you brothers and sisters, Adawan Rataza, that is to say Lord willing, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan I Bad, back again with another lesson. Uh, to the spare and power of Yahweh Hashem uh, from the GMS Miami camp. Um, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying, okay, unto the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh All right? So with that, I'm going to start, I'm going to go into this lesson, and um, this is going to be more like a spiritual read. Um, I remember when I read this chapter, I can't remember exactly when, but it was a, it's a little while back, you know, good ways back. But uh, I mean, the brothers was uh, speaking of of this um, this account right here. Uh, we were trying to remember where it what was at. We were trying to locate it, but it is um, First Ezra, the fourth chapter, okay? And um, this, this is going into... Um, the king, a woman, and the truth, you know, which which is stronger, the king, the woman, or the truth, you know, this account, um, it's a lot to learn from this, you know, so I don't have too much time, I'm on a lunch break, I'm going to get into it, and we're going to read it and go through it, you know, so this is going to be like a spiritual read. In this particular lesson, and um, Lord willing, I find a title by the end of this lesson. Okay, so this is all of the spirit to the spirit and power of the hour by Shemiel Shai. I'm gonna read first Ezra, the fourth chapter. Okay, so let's get into it. This is first Ezra, chapter four, and verse one. It says, Then the second that had spoken of the strength of the king began to say. O ye men, do not men excel in strength that bear rule over sea and land and all things in them? But yet the king is more mighty, for he is lord of all things, slaki of all these things, and hath dominion over them. And whatsoever he commanded them to do, slaki, whatever, whatsoever he commanded them, they do. So this is speaking of the king, right? It says, if he bid them make war the one against the other they do it that's the power that a king has right he has that authority to give orders commands it says if he send them out against the enemies they go and break down mountains walls and towers they slay and are slain and transgress not the king's commandment right because he's a king it says if they get the victory they bring all to the king, as well as the spoil and all things else. So this would the this would the king would get when the king, you know, sent his army out to a war. If they win that war, they get the spoils. That's that's how that's right. That's how it is. It's been like that throughout history. You know, the victor the victor get to 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 write history and and, and, and take the spoils, man. That's how it's it been like that. Even if that history is a lie. <laughs> as as we know, uh, that's how Esau do it. You know, <laughs> you know, he, he the wicked man, but not to stray from the topic. You know, uh, verse six. It says, likewise, for those that are no soldiers and have not to do with wars, but use husbandry when they have reaped again that which they had sown. They bring it to the king, right? And compel one another to pay tribute unto the king. So, out of the, this is speaking of the king, right? Um, it says, verse 7, 
and yet he is but one man, right? And if he command to kill, they kill. If he command to spare, they spare. If he command to smite, they smite. If he command to make desolate, they make desolate. If he command to build, they build. If he command to cut down, they cut down. If he command to plant, they plant. So all his people and his armies obey him. Furthermore, he lieth down, he eateth and drinketh and taketh his, his rest. And these keep watch round about him. Neither may anyone depart and do his own business, neither disobey they him in anything, right? Because he's the king, right? O ye men, how should not the king be mightiest when in such sort he is obeyed and he, and he held his tongue, okay? So they're looking for what is, what is, what is mightiest, man? The woman, the king, or, or, or this truth? Or truth, you know? It says, First Ezra, the fourth chapter, and verse 13, it says, Then the third who had spoken of a woman, spoken of woman and of the truth, this was Zerubbabel began to speak. O ye men, is it not the great king, nor the multitude of men, neither is it wine, right, that excel it? Who is it then that ruled them, or had the lordship over them? Are they not women? Okay, so this is Zerubbabel, and he's speaking of women, right? It says, women have borne the king and all the people that bear rule by sea and land, okay? Even of them came they, and they nourished them up that planted the vineyards from whence the wine cometh. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men, and without women cannot men be. It says, yea, if men gather together gold and silver or any other goodly thing do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty and letting all those things go do they not gape and even with open mouth fix their eyes fast on her and have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver and gold or any goodly thing whatsoever speaking of the woman it says, a man leaveth his own father that br brought him up and his own country and cleave it unto his wife. He sticketh not to spend his life with his wife and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? <laughs> you see that? Some woman ain't got to do nothing, man. Some 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 woman, some woman could just sit and stay right where sit sit and stay right where they is, and just do what they have to do. You know, some woman just lay on their back and everything just come to them. They ain't got to do much, right? But read on. It says, um, verse twenty three, First Ezra chapter four and verse twenty three says, "Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal." To sail upon the sea and upon rivers, and look it upon a lion and goeth in the darkness, and when he had stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. <laughs> okay, meaning the woman, man. It says, Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yea, many there be that have ran out of their wits for women and became servants for their sex. Yeah, that's some, some men love women that much, man. It says, many also have perished, have erred and sinned for women. And now, do ye not believe me? Is it not the king great in his power? Do not all reigns, sorry, do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I say him, and a, and a palm, a pame, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bactacus, Bartacus, it says, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head and, sit, sit, and setting it upon her own head. 
she also struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth, right? <laughs> but if that, was, if, that was, if, that was, if that was another man trying that, that would have been a problem. Let me read that again. It says, verse 30. I'm going to start at verse 29. It says, Yet did I see him and a pame, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Barticus, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head, she also struck the king with her left hand. You see? It says, verse 31, And yet for all this the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. If she, if she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter that she might be reconciled to him again. Right, you see? But a man couldn't do that. But it says, O ye men, how can it be, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? And it says, Then the king and the princess looked at one another, so he began to speak of the truth. Right. So one came and spoke about the king. Zubarel, uh, Zerubbabel spoke about the woman. And also he spoke about the truth. It says, verse 34, 1 Ezra chapter 4, and verse 34 says, O ye men, are not women, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in his course. I'm going to start at verse 33 again. It says, Then the king and the princess looked one upon another, so he began to speak of the truth. Okay, now he's going into the truth. Verse 34, it says, O ye men, are not women strong? Great is the, the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in, in, its, in his course. For he compasseth the heavens round about and fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day. Is he not great that maketh these things? That's right. Therefore great is the truth, okay, and stronger than all things. Right, the truth, man. Okay, the wisdom of the Most High. Right, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, is he not great that maketh these things? Therefore great is the truth, all right? And stronger than all things. So that means stronger than the king, stronger than woman. Okay, the truth, man, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, man. Okay, verse 36, it says, and all it says, all the earth crieth upon the truth, and the heaven blessed it. All works shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing. Wine is wicked, the king is wicked, women are wicked, all the children are the all the children of men are wicked, and such are all their wicked works, and there is no truth in them. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. As for the truth, it endureth and is and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. So the truth, man, at the end of the day, not a king, not a woman. Okay? You see? So it says, um, with her, there is no accepting. It says with her, well, you know, the only king is uh, the king of kings, okay, which is Yahweh Shai, all right? As we know, he is the word. One of his titles is the word, the word of God. So Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai? Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, okay? That's the truth, man. The truth and the real truth of the matter, right? It says, uh, verse 38 again, it says, As for the truth, it endureth, and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. With her there is no accepting of persons or rewards. But she doeth all things that are just, and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. And all men do well like of her works. And all men do well like of her works. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness, and she is the strength of strength, 
kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the, the power of truth, man. Yahweh. Okay? It says, blessed be the power of truth. Okay, Yahweh. Right? Rashim Yahweh Shai. It says, um, verse 41. And with that, he held his peace. Okay, so speaking about Zerubbabel, it says, And all the people then shouted and said, Great is truth, great is truth, and mighty above all things. That's right. Then said the king unto him, I ask what thou wilt more. Say, so ask. And this was in the time of Darius, King Darius. Uh, I think that was the, the, the Medes and the Purge uh, rulership. It says, then, then said the king unto him, Ask what thou wilt more than is appointed in, in the writing. And we will give it thee, because thou art found what thou art found wisest, and thou shalt sit next to me, and shall be called my cousin. Right. So the king told Zerubbabel, he's gonna be, he's gonna sit next to him and be called my cousin, man. It says, then said he unto the king, Remember thy vow which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom. Okay. You see, the the Lord always uses uh, one of his servants, man. Okay. Uh, 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 and bring that fa that favor back to his people, man, which is the Lord's will. You know, he's the father of spirits, and he, he you know, he he do he, he do his pleasure. He uses who he uses, man. You know, meaning he, he, he Lord say he'll have mercy on who he love mercy on, and he will harden who he, who he will harden. Roughly paraphrasing. It says, uh, verse forty three again. It says, then said he unto the king, meaning Zerubbabel, remember thy vow which thou hast vowed to build Jerusalem. In the day when thou camest to thy kingdom, and to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem, which Cyrus set apart, when he vowed to destroy Babylon and to set them again thither, meaning there, thou, thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned when Judea was burned, was made desolate by the Chaldeans. Speaking of the time when the Babylonians uh, uh, sacked Jerusalem, okay, and the Edomites helped them. They burned the temple. We just read it. First Ezra chapter 4 and verse 45. Thou also vowed to, to build up the temple, which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldeans. And now, O Lord, the king, this is that which I require, and uh, which I desire of thee. And this is the pricely liberty, liberality, liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire, therefore, that thou make good the vow the performance whereof with thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven. Then Darius the king stood up and kissed him and wrote letters for him unto all the treasures and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safe, safely convo, convey on their way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. He wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Selo, Syria and Phoenix and unto them in Lebanus, that they should bring cedar wood from Lebanus unto Jerusalem, and that they should build the city with him. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm up into Jewry concerning their freedom, that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, no treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors, and that all the country which they hold should, uh, hold should be free without tribute and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews, which they then held. Okay, it says, yea, that they should be yearly given 20 talents to the building of the temple until the time that it were built. It says, and another 10 talents yearly to maintain the burnt offerings upon the altar every day, as they had a commandment to offer 17. And that all that they went from Babylon to build the city should have free liberty as well they as their posterity and all the priests that went away. He wrote also concerning the charges and the priest vestments, it says, wherein they minister and likewise for the charges of the Levites to be given them until the day that the house were finished and Jerusalem built it up. And he commanded to give to all that kept the city 
pensions and wages. He sent away also all the vessels from Babylon that Cyrus had sent apart, set apart and all that Cyrus had given in commandment, the same charge he also to be done and he set unto, sent unto Jerusalem. Now when this young man was gone forth, he lifted up his face to heaven toward Jerusalem and praised the king of heaven. Okay, the Most High Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, and said, from, thin, from, from thee cometh victory, from thee cometh wisdom, and thine is the glory, and I am thy servant. Blessed art thou, O, who has, who has given me wisdom, for to thee I give thanks, O Lord, of our fathers. And so he took the letters and went out and came unto Babylon and told it to all his brethren, and they praised Yahweh of their fathers because he had given them freedom and liberty okay to go up and to build Jerusalem and the temple which is called by his name and they feasted with instruments of music and gladness seven days man okay because the Lord gave him that wisdom man to speak before the king okay yeah so hey, hey this was first the reading of first Ezra the fourth chapter I'm gonna just call it first Ezra the fourth chapter man it's very um you know, uh, historical, spiritual, you know, and um, something to learn from, man. Things written before time was written for our learning, okay? Romans 15 or 4. So with that, Lord willing, you were edified on to the next one. Shalom.